Hello students, I hope you are all safe and good. I am Hemu Priya, your physics teacher from Bharadasana Metric I Secondary School, Arakonam. We see a lot of things around us through the eyes. Then why don't the eyes see the things in the dark or the night? This is because of light. So throughout this chapter, we will be studying the behavior and properties of light. What is our lesson name? It is optics. So optics is a branch of physics which deals with the behavior and the properties of light. As I said, we are able to see the things because of the light coming from the objects. During a dark or the night, as there is no light, we are not able to see the things clearly. There are certain objects which can generate the own light. For example, the sun, the burning candle, or the fluorescent bulbs. So these objects they can generate the own light. So these objects are called as luminous objects. So the objects which generate the own light are called as luminous objects. But most of the time we come across the objects which are not able to generate the own light. So the those objects which cannot generate the own light are called non-luminous objects. The table and the chair or the wall or the tree. So these objects they are not able to generate the own light. So these objects are called non-luminous objects. Just hold on. As said, we are able to see the things because of the light coming from it. Then how can we able to see the non-luminous objects? This is due to the reflection of light. So we are able to see the non-luminous object because of the reflection of light. What this non-luminous object basically does? It gets the light from the luminous objects. When the light from the luminous object, it falls on the surfaces, it reflects the light to our eyes. So, the, so we can summarize it as the non-luminous object, it gets the light from the luminous object and reflect it to our eyes. So this is how basically we see the non-luminous objects. So how can we see the things? It is basically due to the reflection of light. Next see the properties of light. Light is basically a form of energy. And this light it, it always travels in a straight line. This property is called a rectilinear propagation of light. This can be proved with the following experiment. Here if you are seeing just lit a candle and place it on a table. Take a long pipe and see the candle. Is the candle visible now? Yes, you can see the candle. So from this you can say the light, it travels in a straight line. Now just bend the pipe. Bend a pipe and see the same candle. Is the candle visible now? No, you cannot see the light of the candle. What this experiment concludes? It concludes the light it always travels in a straight line. Next, the light it behaves both as a light it behaves both as a wave and particle. So light has both the properties of wave and it behaves both as a wave and the particle. Here if you are seeing the light being refracted from the prism, here the light is getting refracted in the form of wave. Since it is a wave, it has both the properties of wave. It has the frequency and the wavelength. Here from this you can say when the light, when the white light, it is getting refracted from the prism, it splits up into its band of colors. This different colors has different wavelength and different frequencies. Here the red light, it has the highest wavelength and the violet it has the lowest wavelength so different colors has different wavelength and frequencies and the red has the highest wavelength and the violet has the lowest wavelength and coming to the velocity of light since it is a wave the velocity is given by the relation of frequency mu into wavelength lambda. So the velocity of the light is given by the equation c is equal to velocity is equal to frequency times the wavelength of light. 
and the speed of the light in vacuum is 3 into 10 power 8 meter second inverse and when this white light it falls on the surface when the light falls on the surface the part of the light is getting reflected and the part it's partially getting refracted so when the light it falls on the interface between two medium it is partly reflected and it is partly refracted so these are the properties of light so first light is a form of energy it travels in a straight line and the speed is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second minus 1 and the speed is given by the velocity is given by the relation c is equal to frequency into wavelength and uh, the light when it falls on the interface it is partly reflected and partly refracted here in the previous slide i would have said when the white light it enters it uh, it strikes the prism it is getting refracted what is refraction what causes this refraction how does refraction happens even here if you are seeing you can see the magic when the pencil it enters from the air into the water in the glass you can see there is a bend in its path how it is happening it happens because there is a change in the speed of the light for example see here the light is in the air medium so the uh, the light here is in the air medium when the light from the air uh, from the rarer medium it enters it enters the water this water is a denser medium so the air medium here is a rarer medium and the water here is a denser medium when the light it enters from the rare medium to the denser medium the speed the speed of the light is getting decreased here let's say the speed of the light in air is 3 into 10 power 8 meter second minus 1 and when it enters the denser medium here i am considering the speed of the light is 2 into 10 power 8 meter second minus 1 as there is a change in the speed there is a bending of light so greater the change in the speed of the light the greater will be the bending now we'll see the how the light is getting bent during a refraction before that first learn the few terms the light ray this right ray is called the incident ray so this is called incident ray and the point where it's meet the other medium it is called point of incidence so it is called point of incidence the perpendicular line which is drawn between the boundary which is drawn between the materials is called a normal line so the perpendicular line is called the normal line the second ray the second ray in the other medium it is called the refracted ray the angle the incident ray which makes with the normal line is called angle of incidence and the angle the refracted ray which makes with the normal line is called angle of refraction so this is the incident ray and this one is the refracted ray and the angle is angle of incidence this is angle of refraction so consider the first case where the light it comes from air medium that is a rarer medium and enters into the water which is the denser medium when it travels from rarer medium to the denser medium if you are seeing the angle of incidence is greater than angle of refraction for example consider this rarer medium as a smooth road and this denser medium as a rough road in which road the vehicle travels fast exactly exactly in the smooth road the vehicle travel faster in the same way the speed of the light is more in the rarer medium and when it comes to the denser medium the speed getting decreased as the speed getting decreased here the light it bends towards the normal line so it bends the light it's bent towards the normal so when the light rays it uh, comes from rarer medium to the denser medium the speed of the light getting decreased and it bends towards the normal 
and this is the second case where the light comes from denser medium to the rarer medium consider this is the water which is a denser medium and consider this is the rarer air medium the same when the car it moves from rough road to the smooth road what happens your the speed increases the same the speed of the light also increases where the angle of inclination is smaller than the angle of refraction here the light in the other medium is bent away from the normal so the refracted light is bent away from the normal so these are the two cases in the first case where the light is entering from the rarer medium to the denser medium when the light en uh, enters from the rarer medium to the denser medium the light bend towards the normal and when it comes from denser medium to the rarer medium the light it bends away from the normal there are two laws of refraction but the light obeys the first law what the first law says the incident ray the incident ray and the refracted ray and the normal so this is the incident ray the incident ray and the refracted ray and the normal they all lie on the same plane so this is the first law of refraction the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal they all lie on the same plane so next is the second law the second law it gives us a relationship between the the incident and the refracted angles and the refractive indexes what is the refractive index the refractive index it gives us the extent to which the refractive medium increases or decreases the speed of the light mathematically this refractive index is given by speed of the light in vacuum speed of the light in vacuum to the speed of the light in medium if the speed of the light in medium is low the refractive index is i if the speed of the medium is i the refractive index is low and what the second law states it gives us the sine of the ratio of sine of the angle of incidence to the sin of angle of refraction the ratio of sin of angle of incidence to the sin of angle of refraction is equal to the ratio of refractive indexes of two medium so this is the second law of refraction the second law is also called as snell's law so second law of refraction is also called as snell's law The first law is the incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal all lie on the same plane. And the second law, it gives the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction is equal to ratio of refractive indexes of two medium. Next, we are going to see the dispersion of light. So consider an apple. When the light falls on an apple. when the sunlight the sunlight has the band of colors when the light falls on an apple we are able to see the cl colors clearly so this is a red color and the leaf it is green in color so we are able to see the colors so instead of sunlight or the white light when i am passing a red light when the red light is passed only the red color is visible to the eyes and the leaf which is green in color it appears black and when the green light is allowed to pass we are able to see only this leaf part which is green in color and the red color it it appears black and when the blue light is allowed to pass we are not able to see the object why this happens what is the reason behind this it is because the different colors has different frequencies here the red light when it is allowed to pass it has a frequency of red color so we, only the red color getting reflected 
the other colors are getting absorbed here then how can we see the all the colors in white light this is because the white color white light which has the all the colors of all frequencies so white color has a millions of colors in it when this white light is made to pass through a transparent transparent or the glass it splits up into its band of colors this phenomenon is called dispersion of light so when the beam of white light is made to pass through a transparent here in this case it is a prism when it is allowed to pass it split into its band of colors this phenomenon is called dispersion and this band of colors this band of colors it's called spectrum this spectrum has seven colors for your simplification violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red so what is dispersion dispersion is nothing but the splitting of white light into its component colors and spectrum is a band of colors so so far in today's class we have seen what is basically a light and how we are able to see the things and the properties of light along with the phenomenon of reflex refraction what is refraction the change in the change in path of the light when it travels from one medium to the another that is when the light travels from one medium to the another there is a there is a deviation in its path so it is called refraction and we have seen and finally we have seen the dispersion of light so in the description the study material and the question bank for the topics we have discussed are included just go through it and take the self assessment to check how far you understand the concept thank you